Hi guys, assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my channel. I am back again with another foundation review. This time we are taking Dermacol for a spin. I have heard some amazing reviews about this inexpensive foundation, so I had to try it out for myself and you guys know the drill, we're gonna take it out for a six hour wear test. So with me right now, I have two shades of Dermacol. One was in fact too light for my skin tone, so I purchased another and the other one was slightly mucky looking. So I'm stuck with the two, I'm just gonna make them work today and let's see how it gets on. In fact, I have three Dermacols. This is actually a fake tube. These are the originals and I'm going to try and show you how to differentiate between a original Dermacol and a fake Dermacol. The fake Dermacol was sent to me by a friend who unfortunately threw the packaging away so I don't have any fake packaging to show you but I can tell you what to look out for on the original packaging. So on the original packaging it does say Dermacol and the Dermacol letters themselves they are embossed on the packaging and then when you turn it around it should have a sticker at the bottom somewhere which says your shade number, your expiry date and a serial code. And here's how you can differentiate between a fake and an original because where you have the hologram on the fake packaging the hologram will actually be a separate sticker which has been stuck on however on the original the hologram is actually sealed with the box and then when you take the tubes out this is the fake this is the original the fake seems really lightweight and the original seems a lot more heavier the other difference i noticed was that both of these are the front of the tubes and dermacol is actually written on the fake on the side of the tube and on the original we have it where it should be on the front of the tube. The other difference I noticed was when you go to turn the tubes around at the back they both have serial numbers however on the fake the shade number is missing and on the original you have an expiry date, a serial number and a shade number. So the fake only has two lines of jargon and the original has three lines of jargon. I also noticed towards the ends of the tube on the fake Dermacol the end is actually pressed down very poorly and on the original it's pressed down very well and if we were to do a complete comparison and tear this thing apart comparing the lids the original actually has a sparkly gold tone and the fake actually has a bland gold tone so that's the comparisons between fake and originals done I had to do that because although the original foundation itself is very inexpensive there are some of us who like to hunt for a bargain but is it really worth putting our skin through that kind of a risk because we don't know what these fake foundations are made up of we don't know the chemicals that are being used would you really want to put your skin at risk had to put that out there so i purchased my demicols from a trusted seller on ebay it's 100 percent original i will leave the link down below in case you guys want to go and check it out for yourself with regards to the shade reference chart i'm not too happy with it because i did pick a color for myself from the tan section however this ish arrived to me and it was completely too light for my skin tone so i had to go and order another one and then when this one arrived it was just mucky looking wait till you guys see it. you guys will know what i'm on about the shades i bought is 218 and 223 and if you compare them next to each other can you see that there is a shade difference between the original tubes so in case you guys purchase two or three shades and you think oh my god what's going on with the difference in colors of tubes don't be alarmed i think it's normal I purchased this in the UK for £12.95 plus free postage and packaging and you get 30 grams worth of foundation. That's a lot for £12.95. The packaging is not plastic, it's actually metal which is why I think there's obviously a lot of weight. It does arrive sealed to you but I have pierced it and had a quick swatch. So my skin type is dry and for shade reference purposes I am a MAC Cosmetics NC35. So to give you some shade comparisons, this is the Dermacol 218 and then we have the Dermacol 223 and then we have the Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 220. This is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation in the shade Punjab. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in the shade NC35. And this is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation in the shade Tahoe and this is the Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation Stick in the shade 4.5 Warm Natural. Onto the application, I have moisturizer on my face since 9am and it is the Millionaire Hair Mist Peptide Pro items that I'm using. I'm going to apply half of my face in two methods. I'm going to use a beauty blender for one side and a buffing brush for the other. I'm going to chance it with my 223 shade. Take that much. I know you need a little bit but you know I've just got it on here just in case so it's not going anywhere. It's, it's like clay. It's clung to my hand. Just before we get applying let's just feel the texture. Bloody hell love. That's really thick. Tacky thick. Tacky sticky thick. For my beauty blender side I'm just going to dot on oh my god this looks super dark what the hell I'm just gonna dot on some areas and then buff it in with a blender oh my god this looks really dark and I knew it like mucky wucky oh 
Mm. Oh, not bad. And it's a damp beauty blender, by the way. There's ever such a faint smell to this. I am definitely not going to use this as a concealer because I know I need to color correct. And it's a yellow undertone, which I'm happy with. Yay! I must say it was really easy to apply with the beauty blender. Talk about the coverage. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. And on the other side, I'm going to go in with a buffing brush. I've literally taken it off the back of my hand, dipped the brush into the back of my hand. I generally never apply foundation with a brush anyway on myself. I can't help but feel like this kind of clings to the skin, drags with the brush, and the Beauty Blender is always my option anyway. It still feels like, I can't explain it, it feels easy to blend. Wow. Just wow, I love the coverage. Anyway, let's talk about the application. Beauty Blender was a dream to apply with. The buffing brush was also a dream to apply with. It's slightly dragged in a few areas, but once you start buffing away, it was fine. For those of you that watch my videos regularly, you guys know that I always color correct the corners of my mouth. I haven't done that today, so we'll see whether any gray coloration comes through from this foundation for now i'm happy i'm just gonna go off camera do my makeup and come back i'm back i got the rest of my face on i'm going on a photo shoot i'm gonna take you guys with me i've set my under eyes and the entire face with my laura mercier translucent setting powder so this is what the foundation looks like right now at 12 19 pm in the mirror from what i'm seeing i really really like it like it just looks flawless it just looks flawless the color is beautiful i'm taking my camera with me so i'm going to keep checking in every few hours and let you guys know how it's getting on let's go and hang out together hey guys so the time is now 20 past one so it's only been an hour into the wear of the foundation so i thought i'd do some zoom ups because we all like close-ups mm. And can you just see around my mouth area can you see how it's just looking a little bit like um i don't know cakey or something i don't know <sighs> Basically, it just looks a little bit cakey. Saying that, let's zoom up by the nose area. If we're looking at the lines by the sides of the nose, it's not set in or sunk in so badly at the moment. I have a feeling it will towards the end of the day. Okay, this is the sides of my top of the nose where I have like issues, fam. <laughs> issues, okay? That's where I have dry patches up here and up here. And right now, it's fine. I can't see any problem, even when I'm taking selfies. Like, selfies are coming out pretty nice. Anyway, let's see what my photographer has to say when she pulls out her big daddy of a camera. Hey guys, I'm done with my shoot. I've just picked up my babies from nursery and the time is now 3.20 p.m. My makeup is looking so good. The base looks amazing. I have had insane amount of compliments from so many teachers and parents. And just zooming into areas where there are normally fine lines or where foundation would normally set for many people you guys can see it's not that bad i mean guys look at that that is not something that i would need to touch up at this point throughout the day of is it three hours of wearing this foundation now um it's not something that i need to touch up right let's zoom into this area here Okay, and zooming into this area here where I have dry areas of concern. Again, the foundation hasn't actually clung to any dry patches. I'm actually really impressed. My toddler was staring at me as well in awe of his mummy. So I don't often get that. So that was nice. Hi guys, the time is now 4.42 p.m. And I'm in the middle of cooking in my kitchen and surrounded by children, obviously. Uh, if you guys follow me on Snapchat, then you guys will recognize this famous door. This is the only door that I stand against and snap with you guys like the majority of the time anyway let's zoom in okay so as my face is releasing its own natural oils i still can't see it breaking apart wow i'm actually i don't know what, what to say when i was applying this guys my emotions were all over the place <sighs> it's so good like at the moment right let's go to the t-zone can you guys see anything notice anything because i can't i really can't literally guys for a housewife at 4 p.m my base looks banging hey guys the time is now 8 6 p.m in the evening and look at my base i'm really happy with it i'm still so happy with it just just look can we zoom in let's so if we look towards the corners of the mouth and nose area where i have some fine lines it hasn't really sat into the lines at all which i do get with some foundations this is really impressive guys the side that i applied it with the damp beauty blender i feel like the coverage was a little bit more sheerer however the side that i applied it with the foundation brush i feel like there was a lot more 
coverage. Hi guys, I'm back to give you my final thoughts on this foundation. The time is now 9.38 p.m. So I've had this foundation on a good seven hours plus. So let me give you my final thoughts. For me personally, how it sat on my skin, this foundation gets a thumbs up. It's an extremely thick foundation. However, I do not think that this is a matte foundation. It is definitely more on the semi-matte. The coverage on this is in if you are somebody with hyperpigmentation and blemishes, this is something that you guys need to try out. However, the SPF factor in this foundation makes me wonder why it was invented for TV purposes. Surely you wouldn't want any flashback in photography or in any cinematography. And furthermore, talking about the SPF factor, I am filming around lighting and you can see the flashback in certain areas of my T-zone. I haven't touched it up throughout the day. It's not something that I like doing when I'm reviewing a foundation. It's not something that I do generally. Personally, for me, this color was darker than my skin tone i don't really mind because i do like going darker i do like looking tanned if you pay close attention to the corners of my lips where i didn't color correct you can see that there are notes of pigmentation coming through this is the side that i used the beauty blender this is the side that i used the buffing brush you guys be the judge of it yourself however from what i can see on screen i love this side more i, I just love the finish on this side but overall i just looked flawless today i can't wait to insert the images in the box you receive the foundation and a very long big leaflet with lots of information in all sorts of different languages but I didn't see any ingredients information that suggests what the ingredients are in this foundation so this is completely useless. I myself have a dry skin type but I exfoliate really well. Currently I am using the Millionaire Peptide Pro Exfoliating Serum. I believe this plays a huge part in the condition and appearance of my skin. If you are somebody with dry skin and you're going to think about using this, I would suggest exfoliate really well before you use this on your face just so that it doesn't cling to any dry patches on your face. If you have combi skin, you are going to struggle with this unless you use separate primers in different areas of your face because as you can see, from the lighting and I haven't touched up my face you can see my t-zone is extremely shiny if you have oily skin by all means do try this foundation but I think you're going to need to set it really really well and then throughout the day you might actually see it breaking apart so be ready to either fix it carry a buffing brush with you in your bag or set it well and there is no harm in playing with this because the price is fairly inexpensive if you have acne prone skin this guy is hypoallergenic so it is safe for your skin type saying that I always do recommend do a patch test first see how one side of your face or a patch of your face gets on with the foundation if you feel brave enough completely go ahead and try it if you have sensitive skin again it's hypoallergenic the scent and fragrance in this foundation is very very minimal and pleasant at the same time so again I do suggest trying it did the color chart work for me Hell no. However, saying that because they are pretty inexpensive for the amount of foundation that you receive within the tube, I think it's absolutely fine to go ahead and purchase two shades if needed. I would like to add that the condition of our skin always determines how a foundation sits on our face. So if you see any video reviews of a certain foundation clinging to somebody else's skin doesn't necessarily mean that it will cling to your skin. Skincare before makeup is so important. So if you do have problematic skin, invest in skincare first. I had so many compliments today on my foundation base. Those of you with blemishes or problematic breakouts, I definitely suggest exfoliating really well before you try this and definitely try this. You will get insane coverage. Those of you that follow me on Snapchat, you guys have blown up my inbox today. You actually loved this base on me. Some of you may find it really thick. If that is the case, just go in with your go-to liquid foundation and thinning it down a bit. It is supposed to be a waterproof foundation. However, no way in here am I gonna dip my face in water and do some waterproof test for you guys. No way. This is definitely a foundation that I would use again, not for everyday use, but those special occasions, especially if I need to be at an event all day far away from where I live. For £12.95, I get 30 grams of full coverage foundation and that being hypoallergenic. SPF factor I have a little issue with but it doesn't really matter. For me this foundation gets a 9 out of 10 with a thumbs up because the color chart was absolutely rubbish. I hate it when I receive weird looking foundation which this 
typically was two two three definitely wasn't for me it definitely made me look darker remember what i said guys i want to stress it one more time exfoliate your skin really well before using this stuff because it's thick and it will cling to flaky areas of your face anyways i hope you enjoyed today's review i will leave the links down below for the dermacol and any products that i'm using that i think may benefit you and i shall see you all very soon in another video inshallah until next time be yourself keep it real assalamu alaikum hey!